Hello everyone, this is Tech Talk Universe. Human beings have always been fascinated by the mysteries of the universe as they gaze up at the starry sky. If we had a super powerful telescope, how far could we see? Could we see the edge of the universe? Would there be a wall there? And what lies beyond that wall? These seemingly ridiculous questions have been on people's minds for centuries. Humanity decided to build a super telescope to discover what lies behind the twinkling stars. The Hubble Space Telescope is one of the greatest astronomical observatories in history, taking humans deep into the mysterious universe, a world we never knew before. The story of the Hubble Space Telescope is full of twists and turns, hardships and setbacks. It all started in 1946, when the astronomer Lyman Spitzer, known for his research on star formation, published a groundbreaking paper on the advantages of astronomical observation beyond Earth. The core idea of the paper was to build a telescope in outer space. Although it seemed like a far-fetched idea, two points in the paper were truly insightful. First, outer space allows for observations free from the interference of Earth's atmosphere. Second, it enables the observation of infrared and ultraviolet wavelengths that are absorbed by the atmosphere. This means that a space telescope would far surpass the capabilities of ground-based telescopes, becoming a true eye in the sky. In 1968, NASA finally decided to build a 3-meter diameter reflecting telescope in space after numerous debates. However, the project was delayed repeatedly due to technical difficulties and high costs. It wasn't until 1978 that the U.S. Congress finally approved the project but they required the telescope's diameter to be reduced from 3 meters to 2.4 meters. This seemingly small change of 0.6 meters cut construction costs by almost half. In 1979, the optical technology company Perkin Elmer began manufacturing the most critical optical component of a space telescope, the mirror. They used an extremely complex computer-controlled polishing machine to grind the mirror, but the process which started in 1979 and lasted until May 1981, fell far behind schedule due to its complexity. In addition to the difficulties in manufacturing the telescope itself, figuring out how to transport such a massive object on a space shuttle without damaging its components under intense vibrations was also a major challenge. The aircraft manufacturer Lockheed fell behind schedule in modifying the spacecraft causing NASA to repeatedly postpone the launch of the space telescope. Finally, after five long years, the telescope and spacecraft were assembled. This unprecedented space telescope was named Hubble, in honor of astronomer Edwin Hubble, who discovered the galactic redshift and provided strong support for the Big Bang Theory. Everything is ready except for a crucial missing element. The Hubble Space Telescope was scheduled to be launched in October 1986. Astronomers and enthusiasts around the world eagerly awaited this moment. However, fate had other plans. On January 28, 1986, the Challenger Space Shuttle tragically disintegrated 73 seconds after liftoff, killing all seven astronauts on board. This accident led to the suspension of all projects that were to be launched using the Space Shuttle, including the Hubble Space Telescope. The Hubble's components had to be stored separately in a clean room, and its relaunch date became uncertain. The astronauts originally tasked with assembling the Hubble in space could only practice in water, simulating the weightlessness of space. Despite gravity still being present in water, it is significantly weaker compared to the Earth's surface. Three years passed in this manner. Hubble launched again on April 24, 1990, attached to Discovery's underside. The telescope flew 640 kilometers above the Earth's surface, and after a five-day mission, the astronauts successfully assembled the 2.4-meter diameter, 16-meter-long 11-ton telescope in space. It took 46 years from the proposal of a space telescope concept by Spitzer to Hubble finally being put into operation. On May 20, 1990, Hubble aimed at the NGC 3532 star cluster in the constellation Carina and sent back its first images. To the scientists' surprise, the images were blurry and had an odd halo effect, indicating that there was a problem with Hubble's optics. 
Researchers eventually discovered that the issue was caused by the primary mirror manufactured by Perkin Elmer. The mirror's edge was ground two micrometers too much, which is only one slash 50 of the width of human hair. This tiny error reduced Hubble's observing capabilities by 20 times. NASA searched for a solution and realized that replacing the 2.4 meter primary mirror in space was impossible. Instead, they opted to correct Hubble's vision by installing two updated instruments, essentially fitting the telescope with reading glasses. In December 1993, three years after Hubble was placed in orbit, the first repair mission began. This was an incredibly intricate assembly task, aiming to correct a two micrometer error that was difficult to accomplish even on Earth, let alone in the weightlessness of space. To prepare for this crucial repair, astronauts underwent intense training in water, practicing on a Hubble replica for 11 months. This was a mission that could not fail. Failure would result in a loss of confidence in Hubble from Congress and the public, with no further budget allocated to it. In 1993, seven astronauts went into space for an unforgettable journey. Due to the high precision and difficulty of the task, they had to repeatedly adjust, correct, and test the telescope. After 10 days of repair work, Hubble's repairs were finally complete. In January 1994, anxious astronomers aimed Hubble at the largest and brightest galaxy in the Virgo cluster, Messier 100. The result was a breathtaking image. The moment they saw the photo, everyone was astonished by the sight of the magnificent spiral galaxy. Located 55 million light-years from Earth, it spans 107,000 light-years in diameter and is about 60% the size of our Milky Way. The image shows Messier 100's two spiral arms, tightly wrapped around a brilliant central core, containing hundreds of billions of stars burning like our sun. This crystal-clear image undoubtedly proves the importance of space telescopes for observing the universe. Hubble had finally succeeded. After this achievement, Hubble turned its gaze to the elliptical galaxy M87, 50 million light-years from Earth. The core of this galaxy emits a massive, high-energy plasma jet extending 4,900 light-years. What kind of material could produce such an immense amount of energy? Hubble spent a significant amount of time observing the galaxy M87, increasing the exposure time to see more detail. Ultimately, it concluded that there was a massive black hole at the center of M87, with a mass around 6.5 billion times that of the Sun. Due to its enormous mass, the gaseous accretion disk of the galaxy was drawn towards it. As gas from the disk fell toward the black hole, energy was released in the form of electromagnetic radiation. This appeared as an extremely bright light in the shape of a crescent in photographs. Thanks to Hubble, humans found the most direct evidence of black holes. As for the plasma jet, it might be the result of energy emitted when a large black hole consumes a smaller one. Two months later, NASA's computers calculated that comet Shoemaker-Levy 9 would break into several fragments due to Jupiter's powerful gravity and impact Jupiter's southern hemisphere on July 16, 1994, at 2015. This rare event led Hubble to turn its attention back to our solar system to focus on this extraordinary celestial collision. On July 18th, fragment G hit Jupiter creating the largest impact scar with a diameter as large as Earth. People marvel at the wonders of nature. Without Jupiter's protection, Earth would have likely been hit by numerous asteroids, making life impossible. On April 1st, 1995, Hubble took one of its most famous images, the Eagle Nebula, M16. Huge pillar-like structures of gas extend about 9.5 light years from the nebula. These towering pillars were dense clouds of dust and gas, nurturing approximately 460 stars with ages of only 1 to 2 million years. This was the cradle of star birth, and astronomers named this immense cosmic structure the Pillars of Creation. In 1996, Robert Williams, then director of the Hubble Space Telescope, made a bold decision to test Hubble's ultimate observation capabilities. He aimed Hubble at a seemingly empty patch of sky near the Big Dipper to see what could be observed. Over 10 days, 
Hubble took three 42 continuous images. After processing and removing random noise signals, people saw an image known as the Hubble Deep Field. The countless small circles of light in the photo were all galaxies, similar in scale to our Milky Way. The image contains over 1,500 galaxies at various stages of development. This photo allowed scientists to estimate that there are approximately 200 billion galaxies in the observable universe. The enormity of the universe cannot be described with mere words of astonishment. On February 11, 1997, after seven years of continuous operation, NASA performed a second repair mission on Hubble. During this repair, Hubble received a near-infrared camera, a multi-object spectrometer, and a space telescope imaging spectrograph. With these upgrades, Hubble's observation capabilities improved significantly, and it set out to explore an even grander subject, dark matter. By measuring the distance of a large number of supernovae, astronomers were able to calculate the expansion rate of the universe. In September 1998, Hubble finally obtained preliminary evidence of the accelerated expansion of the universe. This indicates that there is indeed a massive amount of dark matter that humans have yet to understand. In June 1991, Hubble focused on the constellation Lyra in the Northern Hemisphere, capturing images of the Ring Nebula. The Ring Nebula is the final stage of a red giant evolving into a white dwarf. This is done by ejecting its gas shell into the surrounding area and ionizing it to form this celestial body. The Ring Nebula is significant because it is likely what our Sun will look like in 5 billion years. On November 13, 1999, the Ground Control Center's computer suddenly showed that all four of Hubble's gyroscopes had failed. The computer immediately started Hubble in safe mode. Hubble has a total of six gyroscopes, but at least three are needed for accurate pointing and observation. This was a fatal blow as Hubble was unable to work. In desperation, a month later, the Space Shuttle Discovery was launched to replace all six gyroscopes and install a new computer. After installation, Hubble's point became more accurate and stable. On May 3rd, 2000, astronomers announced that they would use Hubble to search for missing hydrogen in the universe. According to the Big Bang Theory, hydrogen atoms should have been produced during the Big Bang, but humans have never found them in the universe. It seems to have mysteriously disappeared. Hubble used its advantage outside Earth's atmosphere and its powerful near-infrared camera to observe quasar light passing through gas clouds. Scientists were astonished to discover that invisible hydrogen filaments were traversing the entire universe between galaxies, like cosmic pathways. Hubble made another significant contribution by revealing the hydrogen that permeates the entire universe, further confirming the correctness of the Big Bang Theory. Can humans see even deeper into the universe? What else can Hubble equipped with the latest upgrades see? From September 24th, 2003 to January 16th, 2004, Hubble orbited Earth 400 times, with a total exposure time equivalent to 113 days, finally capturing an image of the most distant universe ever seen. This image, called the Hubble Ultra Deep Field, contains 5,000 galaxies with ages ranging from several million to several billion years. The oldest galaxy in the image formed 13 billion years ago, allowing people to glimpse ancient images from 800 million years after the Big Bang. In 2004, Hubble was supposed to undergo its fifth upgrade, but the plan was canceled due to the 2003 Space Shuttle Columbia disaster. As a result, NASA realized that the safety of the space shuttle was too low and needed to minimize launches while seeking new space transportation alternatives. On August 31, 2005, only three of Hubble's six gyroscopes were left functioning. Since there were no more space shuttle launches, Hubble could not be repaired, and the control center had to shut down the third gyroscope, forcing Hubble to operate in limited two-gyroscope mode. No one expected that Hubble, working with a crippled system, would observe direct evidence of the most mysterious substance in the universe, dark matter, just a year later. In the famous bullet cluster photo, the blue region contains most of the mass of the two galaxy clusters and is where the mysterious dark matter is located. 
Scientists believe that dark matter makes up 85% of the total mass of the universe, but with our current level of understanding, we still cannot know what dark matter is made of. Due to the value of astronauts' lives, NASA could not risk sending them on a dangerous mission to repair Hubble. As a result, NASA began discussing plans to decommission the telescope. However, the news spread, and unexpectedly, the global public and media strongly opposed this decision. Hubble had become more than just a piece of space equipment. It was like a cosmic messenger for all of humanity. It was the eyes of our small blue planet, exploring the universe. People around the world were deeply connected to Hubble and its incredible discoveries, and they were not ready to let it go. In 2006, the new NASA administrator, Michael Griffin, called a press conference. Despite immense pressure, he ordered the final Hubble upgrade and maintenance mission. His announcement was met with thunderous applause as people were genuinely overjoyed. Everyone was reluctant to let Hubble retire after its many incredible discoveries. Astronauts continued their training and preparation for the mission. After three years of careful preparation, the Space Shuttle Discovery took off in 2009. During the 10-day maintenance mission, Hubble received upgraded imaging equipment, replaced its 19-year-old batteries, installed six new high-precision gyroscopes, and was fitted with a new space guidance system. Hubble's capabilities were once again at their peak. In the final moments before leaving Hubble, the astronauts bid them an emotional farewell. From that point on, humans would never be able to help Hubble again. On May 31, 2012, astronomers announced, based on Hubble's observations, that our Milky Way galaxy would collide with the Andromeda galaxy in about 4 billion years. The two galaxies would eventually merge into one. It remains uncertain whether the solar system will survive this cosmic event. On March 3, 2016, Hubble stunned the world again, observing the birth of a bright new galaxy named GNZ 11, located 13.4 billion light-years away. This galaxy formed only 400 million years after the Big Bang, and it is the closest observed point to the Big Bang itself. In June 2018, a strange celestial object with an unusual orbit was discovered. Hubble turned its gaze to the object, which unexpectedly accelerated, and appeared cigar-shaped. The object named Oumuamua was found to have tumbled through space, challenging our previous understanding of celestial bodies. Oumuamua was not a product of our solar system. It came from another galaxy. It is the first known interstellar object to pass through our solar system. Astronomers are still unable to determine what Oumuamua is. After 2021, Hubble's observation quality significantly declined and it entered safe mode three times in one year. The 31-year-old Hubble has not been maintained for 12 years, and it may have to close its doors one day. Since its launch in 1990, the Hubble Space Telescope has completed over 1.5 million scientific observations and helped astronomers publish tens of thousands of scientific papers. It generates 10 terabytes of data per year, with a total storage capacity of over 300 terabytes far exceeding the data volume of the U.S. National Library. It is the most productive scientific instrument in history. Hubble's images transcend national and ideological boundaries. There is no language or cultural difference in its view, and anyone can freely access these images. They are both grand and humble, reminding us of our insignificance in the vast, unknown universe. Hubble is not just a solitary telescope. It is the product of the tireless efforts of thousands of scientists, engineers, and workers. It embodies humanity's relentless desire to explore the unknown. This desire drives Hubble to keep moving forward, extending its vision to 13.4 billion light years away. That's the end of today's story. We'll talk more in the next episode. This is Tech Talk Universe. See you next time.